afternoon, good evening, good evening. Welcome to Emergency Management Associates. <laughs> Welcome to Emergency Management Associates. We're coming to you from the Area Command, 322 miles or 392 miles west of Kitty Hawk Beach, North Carolina. We're going to wait for a little while to get people into this chat, into this program. I don't want to repeat things and I don't want people to keep asking over and over, well, what about this? What about that? So we're waiting right now. According to my monitor, we're not even going to be picked up by the YouTube network for another, I want to say, two minutes. Here we go. Now we're on the YouTube system here. Hi, my name is Ron Tyler. I'm coming to you from the Emergency Management Associates headquarters in North Carolina, 392 miles west of Kitty Hawk Beach, North Carolina. We want to welcome everybody here. Darcy Tardoff is here. Highway Runner is here. Hi! It's good to see you out there on the road, Highway Runner. Demon Catman from the east of England is here. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. I want to thank all of our mods that are going to be here on this program tonight. I spoke with um, Rob52 a little bit earlier. We want to again wish Rob and his lovely wife happy anniversary. It was, it was their 50th anniversary on Saturday. And they had a wonderful time with their anniversary. We want to thank them for everything that they've ever done for us. Um, they've supported this program. Rob has been a very dear friend of mine, very, very dear friend of mine. I want to thank him as well, personally, and many of his friends and his family. We love them very dearly. Leon is This is not Sue Ellen from Juanito from El Centro, California is here. Welcome, welcome. And we're already getting buffered here. Isn't that just great? Coming into our program, getting buffered this early in the program. Good to see you. Yes, we're being buffered heavily. I'm going to probably see if I can get out, come back in on my monitor, and see if that works for me. Works for everybody else. If you're getting buffered really bad, please go in and come back, or go out and come back into this program. Sometimes that helps. No, we're still getting buffered here. Go figure. Jeez. Unreal. Eight Ducks is here. Thank you for being here. Uh, Connie Quake is here. Polly Pure, Sweet Polly Purebred is here. We thank all of you for being here tonight. Folks, I have some things I want to show you. The biggest quake we've had here is over in Japan. Over in northern Japan. This is the province of Honshu, Japan. J as you can see, this is a 6.1. Well, you can't see it, but it came out as a 6.1 earthquake and immediately got downgraded by the agency. They downgraded it to 5.9, which is the lowest de denomination when it comes to earthquakes that they're going to downgrade it to, I have a feeling, at least right now. Folks, this may have been a large earthquake. Like I said, it came in as a 6.1. It could have been as much as a 5.5, or 6.5, I'm sorry, as much as a 6.5 magnitude earthquake. Notice where it's located, okay? It's located towards two major cities here, okay? Yet, I want to say yet, okay? This is incredible, Reuters is telling us that the earthquake came in with a preliminary, preliminary magnitude, hit Awate and Omori, Japan, prefectures in northern Japan this afternoon. The epicenter was northern coastal town of Iwate prefecture, and the agency said, adding that a tsunami warning had not be, been issued. There were no reports of immediate damage or even injuries, okay? Now, with that being said, okay, usually when these earthquakes happen, there's no reports 
right at that point in time of people that were injured or property damage. Now that could change at the moments at a moment's notice. This earthquake hit in the middle of the afternoon today here where we live in the United States. However, this hit on Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning over there in Japan. So with that said, it could be more dangerous. The subways were rolling in Japan and this was a big earthquake. Okay, a 6.1 earthquake is a very strong earthquake. Regardless of their downgrade, it's still a very strong earthquake. And I don't believe they should even be downgrading this quake, okay, especially where it is in Japan. Jason Benner says, good evening from Wisconsin. He says, did I hear right that there was an earthquake in the Carolinas? Yes, there have been some tremors here in North Carolina. Tremors, okay. There have been some 2.5 and even 3.5 earthquakes over on the coast area, coastal areas of North Carolina. Okay, we'll get to that either later in this broadcast or possibly tomorrow. That is normal. That is normal. Those kinds of earthquakes have been happening, but just until recently, they're not reporting them. Recently, they have not been reporting them. Okay, I want to make that perfectly clear. They don't report much of anything unless somehow the news media finds out about it. And that's typically what happens. That's very typically what happens. Now, I want to go from that earthquake because that was the biggest earthquake anywhere in the, in the world, okay? There's earthquakes everywhere, but almost anywhere else in this world, um, that was the biggest, okay? Now, what I'm showing you here is a map of the Dolly Ships collision with the Francis Scott Key Bridge, okay? Why am I showing you this, okay? If you go right over here, right here, see this dotted line here? It's a dotted purple line. That is a gas line. That is a gas line. Let me get my big fingers out of the way and show you this here with my pointing pointer pencil here. This dotted line here is a gas line, okay? It goes under the sea, under the water here. It sits on the bottom of the coastal byway here where the ship had the collision with the bridge. Now, why am I showing it to you? Some part of this ship may be sitting right on top of it. Some part of this dolly shipping container ship that was loaded down with the shipping containers. And by the way, the loaded ship weight was 95,000 pounds. 95,000 pounds. Now, this bridge landed on top of the ship. The ship made a collision with a pier, a key pier, that brought down the bridge. Now, parts of that bridge are on top of that ship right here on the bow of the ship. Some 9,000 9, pounds of bridge are on the bow of the ship. Now, this ship may be sitting on top of this gas line. Okay, why am I saying that? If they were to try to move this ship without first removing all of the bridge debris that's on the hull of this ship, it could rupture this gas line here. Then we would be in real trouble. Okay, ruptured gas lines, even in the water, can cause fires. Okay. So they're going to try to remove all of this damaged bridge off of the ship and then float it. As I pointed out to you last, I believe it was last Friday, this was a 95,000 pound or 95,000 ton ship. 
On top of that, 9,000 pounds added on to it as a result of that collision and the debris falling on the hull of the ship. Now, with that said, we were told last Thursday and Friday that there may be only 12 inches of water between the bottom of the ship and the bottom of the waterway. 12 inches of water between the ship and the bottom of the waterway. It may be also resting on the bottom down here. Now, the divers are the people who told us that the ship was only 12 inches from hitting the bottom of the channel. Okay? But since then, this weekend, we've been told that the ship may be resting on this pipeline, this gas pipeline right here. Now, what is the what are these lines over here? These are electrical lines. These are all electrical lines running along the bottom of the waterway here. We do not believe that these electrical lines are damaged. We have no reason to believe that these electrical lines are damaged. If this ship was forced down towards the bottom over here with all that added weight on the front of the ship, it may be resting on this gas pipeline. But on this side of the ship, it would be lifted up because the front of the ship was pushed down. The back of the ship would possibly be lifted up. So we don't believe the ship is resting on any electrical lines here near the Francis Scott Key Bridge, which is no more. Okay. I wanted to make sure you understood what's going on. This is very, very real. Okay. I want to make sure everybody realized what's exactly happening. Now, with that said, they have begun cutting that bridge apart. All the superstructure of that bridge has to come apart. The cranes over there, they have four cranes in the area, huge monster cranes from all over the eastern seaboard of the United States are there that are trying to lift up parts of that bridge, okay? They have to cut it off. Each and every part of that bridge has to be cut apart. They have to cut apart the parts of the bridge that were sitting on the ship. They also have to cut apart other parts of the bridge and that ship, okay? If they're not careful, they could actually puncture that ship and it would go down. Now, there was talk last week, at the end of the week, that the ship may already be damaged, that two holds of the ship might already be full of water. Two holds of that ship may already be flooded with water. Now, we don't have anything to confirm that with at all. I'm passing this on from the news media. I'm also passing it on from the okay. Wilson says we're being stretched very thin. Anatolian says sounds like a hard and dangerous work. I believe it is as well. Okay. Aubrey saying the plot thickens. It absolutely does. Is. It's very thick right now. Now, we could have anything happen. Literally. Absolutely anything could happen at this point. I'm not going to... Um, even think it's going to be easy. This is going to be long and intricate. Okay. It's going to be long and it's going to be intricate because they can't damage the bridge any more than it's already damaged because it could puncture a hole in the ship. We don't want that to have happen. Now, when this incident first happened, the news media and the state of Maryland said that the ship did not contain any hazardous materials on it, that there was no hazardous materials containers. Well, guess what? We have since found out that they lied. There are 14 containers on that ship containing hazardous materials. 
They're not telling us exactly what kind of hazardous materials, but 14 containers on the ship contain hazardous materials. We're going to try to get to the bottom of that. Okay? <laughs> it's incredible. At one moment, they're telling us one thing. On the next moment, or at the next moment, they're telling us exactly the opposite. So if they said the, no, there were no hazardous materials on that ship, and then they come back later and say there are, what else are they withholding from us? Okay? I'm just throwing that out there. What else are they holding away from us? What are they telling us that we, sh we ought to know about? I'm going to keep you informed as soon as I hear anything. Okay? Catherine Sigerson says that's a heavy load with hazmat. How will all that be if it cracks open? Okay, that's a good question. That is a very good question. Now, Wilson is saying you must find the one new, the real news. However, you can think beyond mainstream news. I have, I absolutely do. I'm already well past the mainstream news. I'm just giving you highlights of what the mainstream has said, and I'm well beyond that, okay? I even went and took a look at a man who has been on YouTube for some time and talks about shipping, talks about our naval ships, the waterways that these ships pass through. He's got a YouTube channel. I'm well past just listening to the mainstream news, okay? Now, the mainstream news only want to report what they want to report, not much of anything else, okay? They have their own agenda. As most of you know, I don't agree with the mainstream news. I don't agree, agree with their agenda, okay? Ben Hutchins is saying the ship deliberately steered to crash into the bridge. Absolutely. Ben Hutchins, I totally understand and believe that. Okay? I do not believe anything that comes out of the mainstream news. I don't believe anything unless I've seen it. Enough. I've done enough of an investigation, and I showed you last week when that bridge went down a week ago, week ago today, I showed you that, that they steered right into the bridge. They steer, steered right into it. They made a right-hand turn. It looked like just the left, excuse me, the starboard's, starboard side of the ship could hit the other side of that pier. But it could have missed it entirely. Okay? That, let's say my hand is this, is this pier. Okay? My hand is a pier. They look like it might go just barely past that pier. But right at the last few seconds, they steered right into the pier and went bang, blank point into it and they took out that pier. They steered right into it. We watched it. And I think this week, I'm going to reshow that video so you can see that. Okay? Now, there are three people, I believe, to hold the blame for this ship going to, steering into the bridge and taking out that bridge. Number one, the harbor pilot, the harbor pilot and his assistant, okay? They were in charge of that ship. They boarded the ship at the pier to pull out from the pier and get this ship out to sea, okay? Next, the captain of the boat. The captain of the boat was also there. They were absolutely there. Now, who's responsible? The harbor pilot with tons of experience, a lot of years of experience, his assistant and the ship's captain. 
Okay. Those are the people who are ultimately responsible for it. NCWQ News and Disasters and Earthquake Explorer, thank you for giving us a $5 super chat. Thanks so much. <laughs> Rebecca says it's for Carol. Carol? <laughs> well, Carol's downstairs. She may be monitoring this program. I will tell, tell her about that when I see her a little bit later. Anyway, guys, um, Darcy asked us just a moment ago. Um, let me pull this up first. I want to make sure we get this right. Darcy asked us. I think it was Darcy. Laura Marie is here from Oregon. My dear friend from Oregon is here. Thank you very much, Laura Marie. Thank you for being here. Um, someone just asked me a few minutes ago. Catherine Sigerson is saying that they mentioned the way to the bridge, uh, but they never said there was a pipeline there. Yes, I just found out about this pipeline earlier this morning. Okay. Ray Spur says a big what if. Absolutely, what if. Okay. Catherine Sigerson said they said the broken bridge metal is bad for ships. Absolutely it is. Okay, it absolutely is. That's one of the reasons I have real problems with what happened here. Okay. Eight Ducks just said heard rumors of a cyber attack as a cause. Can Lou look into it? if you like fam, okay? Let me tell you this, Eight Ducks and everybody else, this was not, this did not have anything to do with a cyber attack, okay? The ship was not being run from outer space. The ship had no contact with satellites. There is no way in heck that this ship was purposely run into by a, run by a cyber attack. I'm going to clear this up right now. That ship was run from the bridge of the ship. This had nothing to do with a cyber attack. I heard rumors of that last week, and now I have factual information that there was not a cyber attack responsible for this shipboard collision with that pier. That's false news. Okay. I know that to be a fact. I know it to be a fact. And it's funny that Don Patoko would just put up a, a statement here <laughs> that says, if you like to speculate it, do it in the stock market, not here. That's exactly right. This was not a cyber attack. It had nothing to do with the cyber attack. No one from any country or any other team of idiots could get control of this ship and do anything with it. The ship has no contact with satellites or anything else. If they have contact with satellites, it's navigation. That's purely it. GPS satellites, that's all. The only people that had contact with any of the ship were the person from the state of Maryland, the harbor pilot, his assistant, and that captain. Okay. Wilson says gas pipeline, not good. I agree. Now, the first thing I thought of is if this bridge hit, I don't believe it would happen yet. Now, we're getting buffered again very greatly. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to, we're back. I'm going to wait for a minute and see what happens here. Boy, we're getting buffered bad here tonight. When I first started, there was no bad. That means a lot to us. Now, what could else happen? What else could happen now? Okay. While they're cutting up that bridge, a part could hit the bottom of the water. 
and either of those pipes could suffer some damage. Now, it appears right now all the, of the bridge damaged is around the front of that shipping book, shipping container ship. That's where it all appears right now. So I am praying like everybody else is praying right now that nothing else happens. That nothing else happens. I believe the only pieces of the bridge that could pierce anything would be that gasoline line, or that, not a gasoline, but that gas pipeline that's down there on the bottom of the harbor there, or down at the bottom of the river, because that's actually a river there. Okay. Does anybody have any uh, any other ideas that you want to put out here while we're talking about this? NCWQ's News and Disasters Explorer is talking about that earthquake here in North Carolina. Folks, I know for a fact that most of the earthquakes that hit here in North Carolina are nothing but tremors. Occasionally, we will get a 2.5, 3.0 earthquake. Two years ago, after I had moved here, Morganton, North Carolina, where I live, just west of where I live, we got hit with a 4.5 earthquake. A 4.5 is a moderate earthquake. Yes, we did feel it here. We did feel that 4.5 here. Now, a year before I got here, there was a 5.1 earthquake north and west of here in Sparta, North Carolina. June of that year that I got here, we drove up to Sparta, North Carolina. I spoke to one of the Cong or not the Congress, <laughs> one of the councilmen in Sparta, North Carolina. He showed me pictures of buildings and homes that fell off of their foundations as a result of that large 5.1 earthquake. I saw the foundation damage. I saw plates and bowls and, and uh, cups and glasses that were thrown out of the cupboards in homes and landed on the floor in a bunch of pieces. File cabinets were thrown open, the drawers thrown out of the file cabinets, and files spilled out on the floors as well. It was quite a deal. Now, that was over on the Continental Divide, the Eastern Continental Divide. Now, I'm going to get out of the... I'm going to get out of this... Um, software that I I've been into here so I can show you exactly what happens. Okay. I want to get back over here to the USGS map. Let's see here. What am I going to have to do here? Okay, good. We're going to get this. Hold on a second, guys. We will get this here. Just a second. I want to get the... Uh, want to get this latest... Earthquakes map from USBS here. And yes, there's some earthquakes in the Pacific Northwest that we need to talk about. Okay. Yes, there have been earthquakes. Quite a few earthquakes, in fact. Okay, that's it there. 
just let me do a couple more things here. Now, all the time we talk about earthquakes over on the Mid-Atlantic Fault. And yes, there was a large 5.0 on the Mid-Atlantic Fault earlier today. Okay, now I'm into the USGS map showing you the, the um, Eastern Continental Divide. This area down here in Georgia is the area where the Eastern Continental Divide meets begins down here okay right here you can actually see the upslope to the top of the mountains of the eastern continental divide okay the blue ridge mountains down here okay you can see the beginning of everything here these are all mountains going up to six thousand feet high okay some of them five thousand others are six to 7,000, depending on where you're at here in the Eastern Continental United States. Okay. This area here, where it, it may show a kind of light here. That's my light. Okay. This is approximately where North Carolina is, where you see my cursor there. Okay. Okay. This area here is North Carolina. Now, this is what we're having to contend with. I myself it, are up here in the foothills of the Eastern Continental Divide. Okay, I'm about 1,250 feet above sea level, 392 miles west of Kitty Hawk Beach, North Carolina. Okay. But we still have earthquakes here. We still have quite a few earthquakes here. Now, as we go north, we see more of the Eastern Continental Divide, starting way down in Georgia, going all the way to the northeast here, going all the way into Canada. Okay? All the way into Canada. We have earthquakes all over this area. Whether... USGS wants to tell us about it or not. We do have earthquakes and tremors hitting all over this area. We have earthquakes and tremors hitting the coastal areas as well. It happens every day. Every day. Now, just for kicks and giggles, I'm going over here to the um, University of Mem University of Tennessee in Memphis. I'm going to go over here and pull up seismograms from the Eastern Continental United States. First off, Blacksburg, South Carolina. Blacksburg, South Carolina. This seismogram happened today. Today, earlier this morning. Look at the earthquakes here. Look at the earthquakes here. Okay. The majority of this seismic energy here happened after 4 a.m. this morning. Yes, there are some other seismic events before and after this, but the greatest seismic information we have today is after 4 a.m. this morning, right in here. Notice this earthquake right here. Okay? This hit at approximately 4.03 a.m. this morning, possibly close to 3.0 earthquake, small earthquake, okay? Then going across this entire seismogram to the right, you see other earthquakes here. This earthquake also about a minute and a half after this one. This was probably a 2.5 minor quake, okay? Then you see some other minor tremors and issues here. We come over here, okay? This earthquake probably happened at about 4.10 a.m. this morning. This looks to be a 2.5 earthquake. 
All the other information here are tremors here, right there. Then we come over here. This is probably a 2.2, 2.3 earthquake right here. Then we go further out here. This is 4, 14 a.m. this morning right here. This appears to be a 3.0 earthquake here in um, Blacksburg, South Carolina. This is Kings Mountain. Kings Mountain. Guess what? This is a volcano. This is a volcano here in South Carolina, Blacksburg, South Carolina. Let's pull up some more interesting information. Okay. Look at all these earthquakes here this afternoon. At the top line here, this is 12 noon this afternoon. Okay. About 12.03 p.m. this afternoon. Look at all these tremors here. Look at all those tremors. And pretty much very lightweight tremors, maybe 0 0.1, or not 0 0.1, I'm sorry, 1.1, 1 1.2 tremors. Okay? Then we come over here, back over here to um, 1245 here on this green line. This appears to be nothing more then a 2.2, 2.3 earthquake. Then we pull all the way over here on this blue line right here. Again, this is a 2.0 earthquake right here. Okay. This is approximately, let me look here. One, two, three, four, five, six. This seismic sequence right here are a bunch of tremors here. This is approximately... Um, 12.36 p.m. this afternoon. Tremors. Tremors. The next sequence of quakes are down here. This is at after 1 p.m. over. See, over here it says 1 p.m. on this black line. We have a tremor sequence here, probably a 1.8, 1.9 tremor there. There. Then we come further over here um, down the line here. This appears to be on the green line just prior to 1 p.m. this afternoon. This is probably a 1.8, 1.9 tremor here. This is also on the green line here. It looks black here with the camera that I'm using. But this is a green line here. This is probably a 2.5, 2.6 earthquake here. Right over here. Okay. This is just a 1.3, 1.4 earthquake. I shouldn't say 1.4. 1.3, 1.4 tremor right there. Then we come further over here again on this black line. This is nothing more than a 1.3 tremor here. Okay. I want to come over here to this blue line here. There is an earthquake right here. This is after 2, 2.32 this afternoon. Just a 2.1, 2.2 earthquake there. Okay. More tremors right over, right over here. This is after 3 p.m. this afternoon. And this is probably about 3.12. Yeah, 3.12 this afternoon where you see that my cursor right here. 3.12, this is probably nothing more than a 2.0 earthquake. The next substantial bunch of seismic events happened over here. Okay. This is Blacksburg, North Carolina, or South, I'm sorry, Blacksburg, South Carolina this afternoon. Right here in this red line, this is nothing more than probably a 1.7, 1.8 tremor. However, over here, okay, you can see over here, this is 5 p.m. today, 1700 hours. Right here, we have a 2.5 earthquake right here. Okay? That's what's going on there. We don't see much of anything else happen here, except this is 7 p.m. here on the West Coast, or at 7 p.m. here on the East Coast. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 minutes after 7 p.m. here on the East Coast. This is tremor activity right here. Blacksburg, South Carolina. 
So it's not just North Carolina. It's absolutely not just North Carolina here. That was South Carolina. Okay. Mineral Virginia. Look what happened today in Mineral Virginia. Over on the left-hand side, this is 6 a.m. So this earthquake here that you see is at least a 2.9, 3.0 earthquake. This happened at just after 6.01, ju actually just before 6.02 a.m. this morning. Okay? Then, after 8 a.m. today, 8.02 a.m. today, look at these earthquakes here. This is a 3.0 earthquake right here. Right next to it, more earthquakes. Okay? The seismic energy didn't stop. It continued here. This tall line here is at least two different lines, meaning back-to-back 3.0 earthquakes. And they continue over here. Okay? This is probably a 2.8, 2.9 earthquake right here. Then two and a half minutes later, right here. This is also a 2.8 mine earthquake right here. The seismic energy before that was a buildup of energy before the main quake. And the this area here is a secondary wave. The same thing over here after 9.15, 9.01 a.m. this morning. Look at this. This is nothing more than a 2.0 earthquake here. Possibly as little as a 1.8, 1.9 tremor. And that's literally everything that happened today except for some minor tremors here. That's it. Okay? That was here in Mineral, Virginia. This afternoon, look at these earthquakes. Look at these earthquakes. We come over here. Okay? This is right before 1230. So this is 1229 right here on this red line. Right here. Okay, 12.29 p.m. this afternoon. Okay, you see this is a multi, this is a multi-pronged earthquake right here. You see the different lines here? Each line, each individual line is an earthquake here. Look at all that seismic energy there. Then, a minute later, look what happened. Over on that other side here at 12.29 p.m. this afternoon, this is these are multiple 3.0 earthquakes here. Then we come over here after 12.30. We have multiple earthquakes here as well. Look at that. Look at that. Multiple earthquakes here. 3.0, maybe even 3.2 earthquakes, small earthquakes. Then we drop down here after 2.30 p.m., okay? 1,400 is 2 p.m. on the black line. 2.15 here on the red line. Down here on the blue line, that is 2.30. So 2.32, we have more 3.0, 3.2 earthquakes, okay? They don't stop. Look what happens here. Multiple 3.0, 3.2 earthquakes right here. And then we come over here with 2.8, 2.9 quakes here and more tremors. We have another 3.0 earthquake here. This is just before, um, what is it, 2.30? Yeah, just before 2.30 here. Right there. They keep happening. This is about 2.40 p.m. right there on the blue line here. Then the next earthquake, well, we have that 2.8, 2.9 sequence right here. Then on this next line here, on the green line over here, it is 2.45 on this green line here. Right there. We come all the way over here, and we have another 3.0 earthquake sequence right here. These large, long lines are 3.0 earthquakes. This is probably, 
I want to say this is probably close to 3.0, 2.9, 3.0 right here. And then we have 2.0, 2.0 right here. And after we have a um, secondary wave right there. Okay. This right here is nothing more than tremor activity right here, tremor activity here, and right here, this is after 5 p.m. 1700 is 5 p.m. So in this blue line, this would be 532 p.m. right here. Okay, this is a 2.8 magnitude quake here, minor earthquake. Okay, this is Mineral, Virginia. Let's pull this down and show you seismic activity here in North Carolina. King, North Carolina. Okay, nothing much here. We have some tiny tremors here in King, North Carolina. That's it today. Let me look at King, North Carolina this afternoon. Here we see some more tremors here in King, North Carolina. Right here, for example, okay, on this blue line. This is 3.34, yeah, 3.34 p.m. this afternoon. This is nothing more than 1.4 magnitude tremor here on this blue line. And some miscellaneous other tremors all the way throughout this afternoon. Okay. Let's pull up some more. This is Sa Sandy Mush, North Carolina here. Look at this. Okay. We have some seismic events th um, this morning. Right down here on this red line, this is 9.15 this morning over here. And we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here we have a 2.0 earthquake right here. 2.0 earthquake right here and more tremors. Then we come over here nearly three minutes later. Okay. This is a 2.8, 2.9 earthquake here. Minor earthquake. Right here, it looks to be a 2.0 earthquake and some tremors here. Okay. That's on the black line. That would be about nine. What is it? Nine. 9.11 a.m. on this black line here. Back down here to this red line here. This is just before 9.30. So this is this is 9.27 um, a.m. this morning. Tremor activity, more tremor activity in here. We have some more tremor activity late this morning here. This is just after 11.15. About 11.19, we have some minor tremor activity here. That's it. Sandy Mush, North Carolina. Sandy Mush, North Carolina, this afternoon. Where'd it go? There it is. Sandy Mush, North Carolina, this afternoon. Look at that. Not much of anything going on. Okay. Here, this is... On the black line, this would be 1.04 p.m. this afternoon, tremor there. Over here, right here, this is nothing more than 1.2, 1.3 tremors here. This is 1,400 over on, up here on the 2 p.m. line. Over here, this is 2 p.m. here. So we come over here on this green line. This is approximately 2.55 p.m. this afternoon. Then six six oh one p.m. this afternoon this evening we have another one point two one point three tremor here. Nothing much ha happening here in Sandy Mush, North Carolina. Let's go over to Taylorsville, North Carolina, which is about forty one minute well forty 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 five minutes northwest of where I am at. We see nothing more than just tiny tiny tremors. All morning long. Taylorsville, North Carolina. This afternoon, the same thing. And over here, they turned off the seismogram. Or se seismogram is what I'm showing you here. This entire uh, graph here is a seismogram. The seismograph itself was turned off for two and a half minutes right here. Why they do it, I have no clue. 
We've seen that happen on many seismograms all over the world. Okay, this is Pittsburgh, North Carolina, just north of where I'm at to the west, to the east, I'm sorry, up here. Okay, this is just after 12.15 this morning. Okay, the red line is always going to be a 15-minute point here. 12.18 a.m. this morning, we have a 2.0 earthquake here, and we have some tremor activity right here. Okay, that's about it until we come down here after 11 a.m. Okay, this is one, two, three, four, five, six minutes. So 11.06 a.m., we have another 2.0 earthquake right here. That's it. Okay, Pittsburgh, North Carolina. Let's look at this afternoon. Yeah, we have some tremors up here just after 12 noon here. And that's just about all. Tiny tremors here in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. Now, I'm going to go over to here, Roper, North Carolina. Usually, we can find earthquakes here in Roper, and that's not the case today. Okay, what do we have right here on this green line? This green line is over here on the left-hand side. It would be 8.45 a.m. this morning. Over here, this is about 8.07, 8.09 a.m. this morning. Tremor activity. After 9.15, more tremor activity here. We come down here to the 10 a.m. line over here on the left, and we go over here to the right. We have more tremor activity here. And uh, just right before um, 10.30, we have more tremor activity here. We come over here to 10.30 on this blue line. We have more tremor activity here. Then down here after... 11.45 a.m. this morning, one, two, three, three minutes after, well, actually, I'm sorry, 11.48 this morning, we have a 2.0 earthquake, but prior to that, we have some tremor activity building up to that 2.0 minor earthquake, and then we have some after, okay? We have some seismic activity after that. It's called the secondary quake. Okay, so very little activity in Roper, North Carolina. Now, I'm going to move down here to roll in North Carolina here. Look at this activity today. This is more typical of what we've seen here in North Carolina. NCWQ Explorer here is still here. Look at this. This is quite a bit of seismic activity along the coast of North Carolina. Look at that. This started after 8 a.m. this morning. 8 a.m. is right here. On this black line here, it looks like we have a 2.6, 2.7 minor earthquake here. This is different. We don't see the bottom of this, but it would be coming down about here. This would be a 3.0 earthquake, multiple 3.0 earthquakes here. Okay. 8.03 a.m. this morning, multiple 3.0 earthquakes here. Another 3.0 earthquake right here. This here is on the green line, meaning it's about 8.50 a.m. this morning. Then all the way over here, on the black line, green line, the blue line here, which is after 8.30, just prior to... Well, this would probably be 8.45, not 8.40, 8.40 a.m. this morning on this blue line right here. Coming over here on the red line, on the left-hand side, it would be 8.15. So this is just three minutes prior to 8.30. So now we have 8.27 a.m. this morning. 3.0 earthquakes right here. Okay. Then we come over here. Again, this is on the green line. Okay, this is this is eight fifty nine a.m. today. Eight fifty, excuse me, seven fifty nine a.m. today. Look at that. Look at that. This is like a three point five earthquake here. 
3.5 earthquake. And we come up back over here on these green, blue, and red lines, and you can see all the seismic activity occurring here. Look at that. Then we come over here to 9 a.m. this morning. Just tremor activity all the way down here. We don't see much of any good-sized earthquake activity. Down here on this blue line, this is tremor activity here. Now we're getting in here where we're seeing some large earthquake activity. It's not large, but it is at least minor earthquakes working its way up to 3.0 earthquakes. I don't think we have any 3.0 earthquakes here at all, but these are minor earthquakes right in here. Okay. We come all the way over here with just minor tremors and such, and then we get over here. Okay. This is a 3.0 earthquake right here and possibly even right there. Okay. You can see what I'm talking about. The, this is good-sized earthquake activity here in North Carolina. Roland, North Carolina. That was this morning. Let's look at Roland this afternoon. Look at this, guys. This top line here is 12 noon over on the left-hand side. So we come over here. There's one, two... 12.03 this afternoon. Again, we're having at least 3.0 magnitude earthquake right here. And it's going off the chart here. So it might be even larger activity than that. And over here, the same thing. Okay? And you can see all this other activity here. From 1 p.m. all the way down here to 3 p.m. 1500 is 15 is 3 p.m. 1500 military time is 3 p.m. And that si this seismic sequence continues all the way over here after 3 p.m. this afternoon. Okay? This is a 2.8 2.9 earthquake here. We have some 2.5 2.6 earthquakes here, some tremors at 2.0 earthquake right here. This is probably a 2.0, 1.88 to 2.0 activity here. This is a 2.0 earthquake activity here. Okay. We jump down here. 1600 right here is 4 p.m. So down here on this line here is 430. Okay. We can see tremor activity coming across here. This is the first 2.0 earthquake activity after uh, 430. Then right here, all of a sudden it begin, begins to be 3.0 activity right there. Small 3.0 earthquake, as well as other minor earthquakes and tremors here. Then we jump down here to 1800, 6 p.m. over here on the left-hand side, 602, 602. This is a 3.0 earthquake right here. A 3.0 earthquake right here. And minor earthquakes and tremors happening all the way over here until right here. This is a 2.8, 2.9 earthquake right here. And tremor sequences right here. Roland, North Carolina and Roper, North Carolina typically have this kind of activity. That's what's going on. Let's jump down to South Carolina again. This is Sumter, South Carolina. Okay. We had almost nothing at all except some very minor tremor activity before late this morning. Okay. Then starting about 7.15 this morning, we started seeing an uptick in tremor activity here. Sumter, South Carolina is just east of Logoff and Elgin, North Carolina, where we've seen a lot of activity. Okay? A lot of tremor and minor earthquake activity in Elgin 
and Lugoff, South Carolina, and the Sumter, South Carolina seismograph was picking it up. This may very well have been, all this may very well have been, and Lugoff and Elgin, South Carolina. Okay, let's look at this afternoon over there in Sumter. Look at this, very little of anything, just tiny tremors all afternoon long. Tiny tremors all afternoon long here in Sumter, South Carolina. Okay. We can go down to Scranton, South Carolina. Nothing but tremors here in Scranton, South Carolina. Let's look at this afternoon. Same thing this afternoon. Tiny tremors over here in Scranton, South Carolina. Okay. Bolivia, North Carolina. Tiny, tiny tremors and microquakes. That's all that's happened here in Bolivia, North Carolina, even this afternoon. Let's go down to Savannah, Georgia. Look at this. Savannah, Georgia. Now, we don't have any major activity here in Savannah, Georgia. The biggest activity we have here is just after 10, 15, 10, 28 a.m., 10, 28 a.m. right here, okay? This may be a 2.0 minor earthquake right here, okay? That's it. Tremor activity all the way throughout the day today, this morning. One more thing. Let's go to Savannah this afternoon. More tremors. Look at that. Literally all afternoon, more tremors. Okay, that's what's happening. Now, why is it all happening? Okay, let me show you this. See right here in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean? This is a mid-Atlantic fault here. It ru runs from way down here to the south. Okay, let me enlarge this a little bit. It runs way down here to the south over here in the South Sandwich Islands. The South Sandwich Islands is down here on the Antarctic Ridge. However, the Mid-Atlantic Fault runs off the Antarctic way down here in the South Atlantic. It runs all the way up here through the South Atlantic over here to the Mid-North Atlantic right there. It continues running up the entire Mid-Atlantic all the way up here to Iceland and points north here. Okay? What is happening here? The Mid-Atlantic Fault here is expanding. The Mid-Atlantic Fault is expanding. The eastern side of the Mid-Atlantic Fault is pushing Africa and Europe in easterly direction. The Mid-Atlantic Fault to the eastern side is pushing Africa and Europe in an easterly direction. However, the western side of the Mid-Atlantic Fault is pushing North America, Canada, and the United States and Mexico in a south southwesterly direction, pushing it. That's why we're seeing all these earthquakes all over the Eastern Continental Divide literally all over the Eastern Continental Divide here. Now, why are we seeing all these earthquakes here, over on the West Coast here? Why are we seeing all these earthquakes all here, okay, going down into Mexico here? Why are we seeing all these earthquakes? Because the North American continent is being pushed on top of the Pacific Plate, the Pacific Plate here. Okay, the Pacific Plate, as I've explained it here before, the Pacific Plate is subducting underneath the North American continent. The North American continent is pushing over the top of the Pacific Plate. And the Pacific Plate is taking a nosedive deep into the Earth right here. Every time we have a solar flare, a CME, or a planetary alignment, okay? 
the solar flare, the plasma radiation coming from the sun heats up the earthquake faults and heats up the plates. All that gunk and grime that is sitting holding those plates together and holding the earthquake faults where they're at heat up. All that biological material, the sand and the earth, the sand and the dirt and everything holding the plate in place or holding the fault in place turns to an oily, greasy-like substance that allows the plates or the earthquake faults to move more freely, causing earthquakes. That's what's going on. Like I said, the North American plate is being pushed over the top of the Pacific plate here on the western side of the United States. Now we're having some earthquakes. We're having some earthquakes here today. Let's go over to the southern side of the Cascadia subduction zone. Right here. Okay. Now, folks, right here. This is an earthquake off the coast of Port Orford, Oregon. Right there. This is a 3.1 magnitude earthquake, a small earthquake. Notice where it's at. Folks, this is the Gorda Ridge. This earthquake fault running west off the northern California coast, this is the Gorda Escarpment. This is the Gorda Ridge here. Right here, this fault zone right here is called the Blanco Fracture Zone. Both of these earthquakes are aftershocks of a 5.8 earthquake that was here last week. A 5.8 earthquake was right here this past week. Okay, this is a 3.1 that's 201 kilometers west of Langlois, Oregon. Langlois, Oregon. This right here is another 3.1. 147 kilometers west of Port Orford, Oregon. Okay. Both of these earthquakes are aftershocks of that 5.8 here that hit here last week. Okay. Now, this long line that runs north away from the Gorda Escarpment right here is called the Cascadia Subduction Zone. The Cascadia Subduction Zone. Okay, it says unnamed offshore faults. It's bullcrap. This is the Cascadia subduction zone, guys. It runs along the coast of Northern California, Oregon, and the United States. It runs off the coast of Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia, Canada. This fault right here. Okay. What do we see right here? This is just barely off the coast of, of Seattle and the Tacoma area. This area right here that I'm showing you right here is called the Strait of Juan de Fuca. The Strait of Juan de Fuca. It runs from the Pacific Ocean over here to Seattle, Tacoma area. This area right here is the Puget Sound. This is a Puget Sound here. This earthquake I've highlighted here in blue is Nia Bay, Washington. This is the third earthquake that we've had here this week. And this is just a 1.2 tremor here. This is the third seismic event that we've had here at Nia Bay, Washington. Just off the coast, 19 kilometers west-southwest near Bay, Washington. Now we go over here, okay? I just love it when they say, oh, there's a quarry blast or there's an explosion, okay? It's not either one of them. Let's zoom in here. I want you to see this. 
this is neither a quarry blast or an explosion. This is a quarter of a mile deep. This is a quarter of a mile deep, guys. This is in a wooded area. These are clouds. These gray areas are clouds here. This is a, in a very wooded area. This is not an explosion. Unless USGS has again had a spontaneous combustus carnivorous, an exploding tree. Okay. NCWQ Worldwide News and Explorer or Disasters Explorer said that that North Carolina quake was online with Virginia. Yes, it had been. Okay, it had been. I wanted to make sure you had the latest what's what's going on here in the North Pacific Northwest. Okay. Hold on just a second. Just a second, I'm taking care of some couple issues here. Just give me just a second here. Thanks, Maude. You guys are doing a fabulous job. We we love you. We love you. But anyway, guys, this is not an explosion or a quarry blast near Swede Heaven, Washington. They say this is a 1.1 explosion. It's not. It's a half mile deep. It's in a wooded area. This was not an explosion. USBS, again, shows its lack of integrity when they try to pull off something like that. It's bullcrap. Over here in the Puget Sound area again, Indianola, Washington, four kilometers northwest of Indianola, Washington, a 2.8 minor earthquake. This is 24 kilometers deep. 24 kilometers deep, about, what, 18 miles deep, something like that. Puget Sound area. Puget Sound area. Okay. We go south of there even. Okay. I just love this. Alterton, Washington. Alderton, Washington. This is a 1.5 tremor, also 15.8 kilometers deep. Okay? Incredible. It's not a blast. It's not a quarry blast. It's not an explosion. It's a 1.5 tremor. This is also a 0 0.8 near Bonnie Lake, Washington. 0 0.8 microquake. Okay, 15 kilometers deep. All right. They're not showing any earthquakes whatsoever here at Mount Rainier. That's a fallacy. That's a lie. There are plenty of earthquakes here at Mount Rainier, and we'll show those to you tomorrow. Okay. Down here, good old Mount St. Helens. I just love Mount St. Helens, but I wish the US, USBS would stop lying. This is right smack down the center of this volcano. They're calling this a minus 0 0.1. Folks, the minus numbers are usually because they're told to be above sea level. This is 7.4 kilometers deep. 7.4 kilometers deep. Okay. About three miles deep. Three miles deep. This is not above sea level. This is deep within the surface of the earth. Okay. It's not above sea level at all. It, they're saying this is a microquake, but it's not. Okay, 
There are tons of microquakes, tons of tremors, and 3.0 earthquakes hitting Mount St. Helens today. The same thing holds true with Mount Rainier. And yet they're trying to pull off something that it isn't. Okay? Then we go further out here to the east. I just love this. Okay? This is Desert Air, Washington. Good old Desert Air, Washington. Nine kilometers southeast of Desert Air, Washington. This is Desert Air, Washington. It's a highly populated area. Let's zoom in here. Okay, it's a highly populated area, and there's a lot of farms out here as well. Okay? A lot of farms out here. It's also a volcanic area. It's also a volcanic area. Look where this river is. Basaltic lava is all over this area, lining both sides of this river here. Basaltic lava. This is a volcanic area. Desert Air, Washington. Okay. This is also 6.7 kilometers deep. This could be down in the earth, which could be a magma chamber this to this area. This could very easily be a magma chamber th to this area. Again, there's Mount St. Helens right there. Okay. Over here, I just want to briefly touch on this. This is Hebgen Lake Estates in west of West Yellowstone. West of West Yellowstone. Okay. Hebgen Lake Estates. This is a 1.1 tremor. 1.1 tremor. In 1959, there was a 7.1 earthquake. And now the scientists are saying that earthquake may have well have been an 8.0 major earthquake. A 7.0 would be a major earthquake anyway, but this was at least a 7.1 here at Hebgen Lake. This today is just an aftershock from that quake. And we may be seeing this same sequence here building up to a larger earthquake here at Hebgen Lake. Okay. A 1.1 tremor there. And right here is a 0 0.7 microquake. Further north, this is a 0 0.4 microquake near Willow Creek, Montana. 1.4 kilometers deep, a half mile deep. Half mile deep up there at Willow Creek. This is Hebgen Lake. This is 14 kilometers deep. Okay? 14 kilometers deep. This is... A 0 0.7 microquake, 8.4 kilometers deep. This is four miles deep here. Four miles deep. Okay. There were some other earthquakes over here near Yellowstone, but USGS has taken them down for whatever reason. North of Hebgen Lake, Willow Creek, that 0 0.4 we told you about, up here. Lincoln, Montana. This is a 0 0.7 microquake here. This is a 0 0.8 Lincoln, Montana. This is another 0 0.7 here. And right here, we have a 0 0.6. Also, all of them Lincoln, Montana. 3.2 kilometers deep. 3.2 kilometers deep. To the northwest, Seeley Lake. Seeley Lake. This is 12 kilometers deep. This is a microqu microquake. Seeley Lake, Montana. Okay. Does anybody have any questions so far about what we talked about here? Okay. Wilson is talking about the super volcano in California. You're talking about Long Valley Magma Chamber. The Long Valley volcano that is east of Mammoth Mountain. Long Valley volcano. Okay. There are other super volcanoes also here in California and New Mexico. 
or I shouldn't say not super volcanoes in California. The only one in California is Long Valley, but there are other um, big, huge volcanoes here in North America in the United States. Trevor Harper says, sounds like magma river flow. It could be. It could be. Everywhere we have a river, guys, we have an earthquake fault under that river. Nine times out of ten, every, ri every river we have is following an earthquake fault. Okay? And this area of the west in Washington and Oregon and even Idaho, the rivers are following um, earthquake faults, but they're also could be following magma tunnels. Magma tunnels are also running east, running west away from the coast of California and running east to the volcanoes, recharging all the volcanoes even around the world. Okay? That's what's going on. Trevor Harper says hot terrain. Sometimes there is. Sometimes there is. Connie Quake is asking about the Ohio River. You have a fault underneath that river as well. Anatolian says we could be sitting on the volcano on volcano land. That depends on where you're at. That depends on where you're at. There have been times that I have looked at the NASA map. Okay. NASA has what they call a firm's website. NASA firms is a website that monitors hot spots mostly fires, but they've also located beneath the ground, they've located magma chambers and also volcanoes. Okay. Jamie A is asking, is the new matter fault serious? Yes, it absolutely is. Just like I said last week, Jamie, I don't know whether you were here or not, but like I said last week, the new matter fault is having earthquakes today, every day. It's been having earthquakes for the last year. Prior to last year, it was only having tremors. Very, very small tremors. 1.2, 1.5, 1.7 tremors. And three years ago, I was telling everybody that was talking about the new matter, don't worry about it right now. Don't worry about it right now. Because all it was having was tremors. Now, a year later, Two years later, now three years after I was all only seeing tremors there, all of a sudden we we're seeing full-blown earthquakes. 2.0, 2.5, 3.0, 3.5, earthquakes on the new mattered fault. Every day. Every day. Every day. Yes, you should be concerned about the new matter fault. We are going to have a major earthquake, and I'm saying within the next two years on the new matter fault. On the new matter fault. There's a lot of seismic energy over on the west side of the United States. Just like I showed you a few minutes ago over on the east coast of the United States, we're having a lot of seismic energy there because the Atlantic Fault is pressing up against the North American continent, Canada and the United States and Mexico. It's pushing the North American continent in a south a southwesterly direction that's putting a lot of strain on the New Madrid Fault from the west and east. It's like getting squished. Okay? That's what's happening. That is exactly what's going on. It's insane. It's insane, guys. I've been watching this for years now. I have been watching it for years. Okay? Three years ago, I was only telling you, don't worry about it. It just tremors. Now it's not. Two years ago, things changed. Two years ago, it was only minor earthquakes. And then it got larger and larger and larger. Okay?
Okay, we've been watching. We've been watching very closely. Okay. Floyd Girl Slay Queen's twin says that she's new here. And Jamie appeared like she was new here. Those of you that are new here, please subscribe. Please subscribe to this channel. And when you also subscribe, click on that little bell icon next to the subscription button. That way you'll be notified when we come on the air. We're on the air every day, Monday through Friday, and sometimes on Saturdays and Sundays, but we usually try to take Saturdays off. Now, before three years ago, we were on the air seven days a week. We're not anymore. We're not anymore. If we're on on a Saturday or a Sunday, it's because some major event happened, whether we had a major solar flare or we had a major earthquake. And that's happened. Or we've had a major fire or a major explosion or some kind of other disaster, disastrous event that everybody needs to know about. We've done that. We've absolutely done that. So those of you that would like to know more about what's going on, please subscribe to our channel and also click on that little bell icon so you can get notified. When you click on that little bell icon, there'll be a drop-down menu of three items. Click on the word A-O-L, all. That way you should get notified when we come on the air. But be advised, YouTube lies. They lie through their nose, okay? They don't always notify you. If you find yourself not being notified over a long period of time, unsubscribe and resubscribe to the channel and also go back there and click on that little bell icon and click on the word ALL. That should restore your notifications. Okay? But you still have to continue to check. One of my mods, Don Patoka, another one of my mods, Rob52, and all the other mods have to do the same. And yet they're my mods. They're unsubscribed by YouTube. That's what YouTube loves to do is unsubscribe pe people. Those of you that are here that think you're subscribed, go back today after our program and look at your subscription to make sure you're still subscribed. If you're not, resubscribe to this channel and also click on that little bell icon so you get notified when we come on the air. YouTube unsubscribes people every day. I don't know why they do it, but they do. And they don't do it just to this channel at all. They do it to everybody. I've got two friends in Idaho that have a major YouTube channel. They do programs on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And they have people unsubscribe from their channel all the time. I have several other friends, literally all over the United States and all over the world, that YouTube keeps unsubscribing them. Make sure you're still subscribed to the channel, folks. It's to everybody's benefit. Taco the Goldfish says, I subscribe too. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Okay? We really do. Hookah Smoking Caterpillar says, do you have any earthquake information about the East Coast? I just gave you all that information a little while ago. After we get off the air, go back and look at that. You're going to find a lot of information. You'll find a lot of information. Okay? I just told you, I gave you all the information because we are having earthquakes on the East Coast. That is one of the reasons why we're having earthquakes on the New Mattered Fault. Because the East Coast, the Atlantic Fault, is pushing the North American plate, Canada, the United States, and Mexico in a south southwesterly direction. We're having minor tremors, we're having minor earthquakes, and even some 3.0 earthquakes on the East Coast, all over the East Coast. It's happening. If you look at the Earthquakes Canada map, you're going to see earthquakes on the East Coast of Canada and also on the West Coast of Canada. West Coast of Canada, you're going to see more and more earthquakes, even more than on the East Coast, 
because we have the North American plate that is being pushed to the south-southwest and subducting underneath the Pacific plate is subducting underneath the North American plate, underneath Canada and the United States. That's why. That's why. Connie Quake says, I'll be happy as long as YouTube doesn't unsubscribe me from my two favorite channels, this one and California Seismograph. California Seismograph hates my guts. They unsubscribe me because they believe I'm a competitor to California Seismographs. I'm not a competitor. I stand with them and all the other YouTube channels talking about earthquakes and tremors and other events that are happening. Okay? I do the exact same thing, but I go into a lot more detail than just California Seismograph. I go into a lot of detail. Wilson is asking, are the planets aligning? Yes. We see more and more planets aligning every day. It's not all of them, okay? It's not all of them. Maybe tomorrow I'll bring in you bring into you all some planetary alignment information. Usually we only have like two, maybe three planets planets aligning within our area here with the Earth and sometimes Venus or Neptune or Venus, Earth, and Mars and the Sun, a planetary alignment. Location, southwestern Ryukyu Islands, Japan, class light, magnitude 4.9, 18 minutes ago. A 4.9 earthquake is not a light earthquake. U.S. just decided to change what they call a moderate earthquake because they don't want anybody knowing what moderate earthquakes really are. Moderate earthquakes are moderate earthquakes regardless of what they want to say. A 4.0 to 4.9 earthquake is a moderate earthquake. That earthquake in the south of Japan, Ryukyu Islands, was a 4.9, 5.0. It was an upper 4. 4.9 is one step down from a 5.0. If they declare it to be a 4.9, they are lying. It's a large 5.0, sometimes even larger than that. And that just happened in the Ryukyu Islands, just south of mainland Japan. Okay? That happens all the time as well, every day. That was my earthquake earthquake trapper application, earthquake tracker application, giving us that information a few minutes ago. Okay. That was a great question, by the way. Thank you so much for that. Wilson says, look up, not your phone. My phone's right in front of me. I am looking right at you guys. Sometimes I, have, I look down at my map on my computer so I can give you information. Wilson says, during the eclipse in seven days. Folks, I'm going to caution everybody right now. Number one, do not look at the eclipse without proper eyewear. That's number one. Do not look at the eclipse while you're driving. Pull off to the side of the road in a safe place. If you're on, driving on a freeway or a highway, do not pull off the highway or the freeway to the right or left shoulder. Pull off the road completely. Get off at an exit and pull off to the side of that road to look at the eclipse. Don't put your life or someone else's life in danger. Be very careful with what you do on Eclipse Day. A lot of people are asking me, is the Earth aligning with the moon and the sun going to cause any major earthquakes? Rarely does it ever. Rarely does that ever cause any major earthquakes at all. It takes multiple planets aligning multiple planetary alignments, multiple planets. Now, when that happens, multiple planets align, it causes um, magnetic radiation. Okay? It cause, causes magnetic radiation out from space, from those planets, coming in and heats up the plates and heats up the core of the Earth. 
electromagnetic radiation. It heats up the plates and it also heats up the earth. That causes earthquakes. Like I said, all the substance, the, the biological, the sand, the biological planets, and, or not planets, the biological plants and other stuff that holds the faults in place or holds the plates in place, it, that substance, the dirt, the grime, the sand, the rock, that biological material turns into a greasy, oily-like substance, allows the plates or the faults to move more freely. That's how that happens. Okay? This eclipse will probably not result in anything in terms of earthquakes. It's not going to happen. It hasn't happened in the past, and it's not going to happen now. Sleeping Volcano just told us about a 3.9 earthquake in the North Pacific Ocean, southwest of Panama. Those earthquakes there are along the Cocos Plate. That area south in Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, El Salvador is in the Cocos Plate area. Okay? That area is definitely moving. Every one of the plates around the world is moving. Okay? Wilson says that when it crosses through the U.S., the history, there's been no real history of earthquakes as a result of eclipses. Okay? Richard Smith says, can tides go crazy? Very rarely. When we have an eclipse like this, okay, the earth regulates the tides on, or excuse me, the moon regulates the tides on the earth. The closeness of the earth to the moon, okay? In this particular instance, the moon is pretty close to the earth as it is, okay? We have a planet, or we have a alignment of the earth, the moon, and the sun. The moon goes between the earth and the sun like this creating a shadow on the earth, okay? That's all that's happening. Now, people are going crazy right now. Wilson says 1811. I don't know much about 1811. But people are going crazy right now. Oh, we're going to have an eclipse. Back in, in uh, 2017, we had another eclipse that crossed across the United States. I saw it from Salt Lake City was nearly a complete total total eclipse. I was watching from downtown Salt Lake City. A lot of people are talking, saying, oh, all hell's going to break loose. We're going to have a war. We're going to have people attacking us. The only way we're going to have that happen is because of Joe Biden. Joe Biden. He has allowed over 7 million people to cross into the United States in three years' time. Over 7 million people have crossed into the United States from the north and the southern border. Those people, a lot of them are terrorists. A lot of them are terrorists. If anything happens during the eclipse, it'll be because of those people causing problems, causing problems. I'm going to caution everybody, don't get involved. Don't get involved. Walk away from it. Walk away from it. Let the first responders do their job. And a lot of the major cities are calling in the National Guard. They're expecting things to happen. They're calling in the National Guard. Let the National Guard and the first responders take care of it. That's the best thing that you could possibly do. Let them handle it. Kel Griffith says it's their new army. No, it's not. It's a bunch of crap. All it is is a bunch of crap. Our present president has no clue what he's doing. He has no clue what he's doing. And I hate saying that. 
I hate saying that. Race versus good advice. Wilson says there may not be any first responders. Be careful. You're right. Be very, very careful. Watch your back. Be situationally aware of everything going on around you. Jamie A says, why are the states calling in the National Guard again? I just said that just a minute ago. Please watch what I'm saying here. The bigger cities are calling in the National Guard because that's where the terrorists and that's where the greatest influx of these illegal aliens coming into the United States. If there are any problems, it'll be in these big city areas. Watch your back. If you're in an area where problems start, get out of there. Don't get involved because you will go to jail. You will go to jail. Diane Kelman says, stay home and don't engage strangers. Don't do it. There will be rabble rousers in the crowd. There will be people from the Democrat Communist Party that are agitating things. Walk away from it. Walk away from it. Don't let those people get into you. Get away from them. If they try to force you to do something, then take whatever action you deem necessary. Protect yourselves. Protect yourselves. Okay? I'm just saying. Protect yourselves. Do any of you have any questions, other questions for me? I'm here to answer any questions. Niagara, New York, Niagara Falls is expecting large, huge crowds, yes. New York is going to have huge crowds all over. Don't get anywhere near large crowds. Stay out of areas with large crowds. Please don't get involved. Okay? Now, I am a former first responder. I was a federal police officer. No, I was not with the FBI or any other three-letter um, organizations. I was a federal police officer. I know federal law, and I also know state laws. I had to do, do that. It was mandatory for my job. Being a first responder, I gained a lot of knowledge on things to do and things not to do. Aubrey's asking any news about the avalanche at Mount St. Helens. I don't know of any avalanche on Mount St. Helens. I was not notified about that. Wilson says, prepare for many false flags. I agree. Again, don't believe everything that you see and even less of what you read. Okay? I'm just telling you. I'm trying to give you some good advice. Okay? Even if you see it in print, don't believe it. Don't believe it. Raven... Raven and Diane Kelman are talking about Rochester, Niagara Falls, having large crowds. Be safe. I would stay out of any place that's going to have a large crowd. Stay away from it. Stay away from it. Rob52 is with us. I love my dear friend, Rob. He's He's been a very dear friend for years, for at least two or three years now. I've I've known my my dear friend Don Patoka for a very long time. I've known all of our mods for a long time. You guys are some of my best friends. In some cases, you're like my own family. You are my family. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. I really do. I appreciate all of our friends here and EMA family. 
all of you that monitor this channel are part of EMA. I appreciate you and respect you as my own family. I'm here to help you. I am here as one of your family members. Okay. I appreciate each one of you. I'm here trying to give you information to help protect you. Okay. I'm here to help protect you and also help your family prepare for what's going to happen. Yes, things are happening. Things are happening all over. And they're going to get worse and worse and worse as the day goes on. As all the days go on. Connie, Connie Quake says she's got her own front row seat for the solar eclipse. That's good. She just steps out her front door and all of a sudden she's at the eclipse. How about that? How about that? Diane says we need to pray every day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wilson said, damn it, Ron. <laughs> please also, guys, please give us a thumbs up. YouTube uses a thumbs up in their analytics as proof positive that the channel's worth something. People that give us a thumbs up, they count that as a lot more weight when it comes to assessing whether the channel is good or not. There's several analytic factors. Number one, thumbs up. Two, the number of people watching the program. Number three, the amount of time that you watch. If you're here only two or three minutes, it doesn't mean much. But if you're here 20, 30, 40 minutes, two hours, they take that into account whether they're going to let anybody else on YouTube see this program. That's exactly what they do. So please thumbs up this program. It's very important. When you come here to watch this program, stick around. Don't just stick around for three or four minutes. That does nothing for you. And it also does nothing for this channel. Okay. NCWQ is talking about a new channel, audio channel, has opened up for ships in Baltimore. They have. I found that earlier this uh, earlier today. They opened up a new voice radio channel so that ships can get in and out of the harbor. Now, nobody's moving until that bridge is moved out of the way. There will be no ships enter or leave Baltimore until that bridge is completely gone. Okay, that's what's going on. Now, you guys, they're talking about Jesus. Please wait to the end of this program. I want you guys talking about here in the chat about things that we're talking about. Okay, please do that. Okay, yes, I love Jesus Christ as well. But right now we're talking about earthquakes. We're talking about all kinds of disasters. Okay? Please pay attention to what we're talking about. Don't talk about other things that don't have any business here. Okay? NCWQ says she sent me the information. I appreciate that. Stay current with what we're talking about, guys. Don Patoka is giving out great information on this channel. He says, your immediate well-being is incumbent upon you and in your hands. Nobody else can or will be coming to spare you from what is going to happen. We talk about emergency preparedness plans on this channel. What are you doing to help prepare yourself for whatever is going on? You need to have a preparedness plan. On top of that, you need to prepare for any kind of disaster, not just earthquakes. You need to also have an emergency food storage. Emergency food storage. If you can afford survival food, 
which is dehydrated food, get that as well. But you need to provide for yourselves and your families when it comes to food. Maybe this Friday, which is Emergency Preparedness Friday, we'll talk about food storage again. It's been a little while since we talked about food storage. But I want to make sure you're prepared. So you need to have a plan. You need to have food storage. You need to have an emergency preparedness kit of not just food, but medical items as well. Be all kinds of bandages and such like that. You need to have your prescription drugs. Make sure you have that. How about emergency cash? Every time you get paid, throw a little bit of money in the stash and don't touch that stash. Put it in a baggie and put it in your emergency preparedness kit and don't touch it. Save it for a rainy day. Okay? Need to have maps as part of your emergency preparedness kit as well. Maps. If you may have to bug out and leave your home for any reason, you need to have a place to go, number one. Find a place to go, not just one, but two or three different places to go in case one of those places is already full up and you can't get in. Also have at least three different routes to get to those bug out locations. Mark those routes on your map and put those maps in a gallon Ziploc baggie so they won't get damp or ruined. That way you'll always have access to your maps and put that also in your emergency preparedness kit. Okay? Logan Fletcher saying, get oil in your lamps. Just like happened in the scriptures, you need to be prepared. Having those maps, having your food storage, having your prescription drugs and bandages and such for medical, that's having oil in your lamps. And don't forget water. You can't go more than three days without water. Okay? So I think this coming Friday, we're going to talk about food storage. Okay? If you have any questions for food about food storage, you need to see this program on Friday. We'll be here talking about it. Okay. Elias is asking, is this for earthquake or eclipse prep? It's for everything. Again, I do not expect emergencies to happen on April 8th. Just because we have an eclipse, nothing major is going to happen unless it's in one of those major cities where we have all those illegal aliens causing problems. That's already happening. Okay. Logan's talking about a truck from pre-2000 backup battery, hide it in a metal box in case of an EMP. Just don't hide it in a metal box, everybody. <laughs> you need to insulate that box from the inside. Then put in your spare batteries, put in your um, phones, put in your computers, whatever you want to save inside that metal box. And I would say even get a metal garbage can insulate it with heavy duty cardboard bottom and top and sides and we talked about this before we'll talk about it again that guy memo says faraday bags you're absolutely right make a faraday cage for your electronic belongings to protect yourselves we talked about this a lot in the past we'll talk about it again diane kelman says where do we go if we don't have a honey lodger land Guys, let me make this perfectly clear. Go through your local area. You guys know your local areas better than I do. Find a place where you, where you can camp, a state park, a national park that's very close to you, where you can go to get away. Find some place near you where you can go to get away 
out of the cities. Stay out of the cities if at all possible. Okay? Stay out of the cities as much as possible. Get out. The cities is where there's going to be a lot of problems. Okay? We'll talk more about that on Friday. Does anybody have any other questions for me? I'm happy to answer any questions right now. I really love and appreciate all of you. Like I said, you guys are my friends. You guys are my family. I really do. Those of you who have known me for a long time understand that. I've been here for all of you for a very, very long time, and I always will be. I will always be here for you. That's a fact. That's a fact. Now, folks, at the end of each program, I have normally given you a spiritual thought. That's what I enjoy doing. I love talking to you about God. No, I am not a pastor. Some of you had called, have called me Pastor Ron or Father Ron. I'm not a father either. I'm a father by name only because I have children, and I love them. I even have grandchildren. I love them very much as well. But I love to leave you with a spiritual thought. I've been doing this now for several years now. I want you all, if you haven't done this before, I would like you to follow me and get to know Jesus Christ by following in his footsteps. Follow him in his footsteps. By doing that, we're going to get to know him, aren't we? We're going to know who Jesus Christ is and how we can be more like him. To be more like him. That's my goal. I would also like you guys to be with me in heaven. I want to be with you. I care. I care about everyone around me. That's why I do devotionals after my regular part of my program. Each of us needs to share goodness all over the world. We need to work to share a message of happiness and the good news of Jesus Christ. I want to invite you to share what inspires you, to share with others what inspires you. And I've been endeavoring to give you spiritual thoughts to help you. I want to help you because I believe in you. I believe you are going to be my family. You already are. I'm trying to help you be more like God, be more, more like Jesus Christ. Would you rather says hello from Australia? Thank you for that. We have a great many followers from Australia. I have a great many family members and loved ones from Australia and New Zealand, a lot. But I want each of you to find your own faith. I can inspire you possibly. I can help you gain faith. But in order for you to find faith in your own life, you need to find the inspiration to feel closer to God through faith-promoting experiences. Faith-promoting experiences like we're having right now. I'm trying to give you ideas on how to come unto Christ. Each of us comes from different circumstances, different family backgrounds, different areas from around the world. 
Each of us has to come from different circumstances, but each of us has been invited to come closer to Jesus Christ, to learn more of his teachings and continue to grow. And we can do that. For those of you that have followed this channel this week, all this last week through this weekend, I have talked about the Holy Week. All last week was considered the Holy Week from Palm Sunday forward. Friday night, if you go to my community page, you'll find a link to my Facebook live video about coming unto Christ. I urge each one of you to take a look at that. And it talks in that talk, I talk about the Holy Week and why it's so important. Look at that. Occasionally, I'll, I will leave messages on Facebook Live for everyone. Take a look at it. I think it's very good. It's very good. Now, tonight, I decided that my devotional tonight would come from 1 Timothy chapter 6. There, the Apostle Paul talks about the love of money being the root of evil. He talks about fighting the good fight of faith. Trust not in worldly riches. In verse 1, it says, Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters, worthy of all honor. Do we honor the people we work with? Do we give them a full day's work for a full day's pay? That the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed? Think about that. And they that have be believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. Verse 3. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrines which, according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputations of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. Should I say, repeat that again? Supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The only thing we're going to carry out of this world is the knowledge that we obtain while we're still here on this earth. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and to many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveteth after, which while some coveteth after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, thee flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, 
whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. That's what Paul says here. Follow Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and you will be blessed. If you don't do that, you're laying yourself wide open for all the arrows of misfortune. Fact. Fact. Brothers and sisters, I followed the road of righteousness. As of now, I consider myself in a good place. I'm not saying that I do nothing wrong. But what I am saying is that we have a message for you. And we have a message for everyone. Repent and look unto God. Repent and look unto God. Now, one more scripture that I want to leave with you, that I feel impressed to leave with you. A few moments ago, someone mentioned in the chat Philippians. One of my favorite scriptures is in Philippians, the first chapter. Philippians 1, verses 3 four, and five. Why? A long time ago, many, many, many years ago, one of our family friends called me into his office and gave me some great advice. In doing so, on the back of his business card, he wrote the following scripture. Philippians, Philippians chapter one, verses three, four, and five. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. That's how I look upon each and every one of you. You are my friends. You are my family. May God bless you. May God protect you and your family. As Don said before, it's up to each one of us to help ourselves and our family. And failing to do that, we're falling, falling off the path to eternal life with our family and with our Heavenly Father. May God bless you. May God be with you and protect you. I love each and every one of you. God be with you. Well, before that, hold off. If anything else happens tonight, I will be back on the air to tell you about it as soon as the information becomes available. Until then, tomorrow night at sometime after 6 p.m. between 6 and 7, I will be back on the air doing what we do best, talking about emergencies, disasters all over the world and here in your part of the area, wherever you might be, whether it's in Australia, Europe, Canada, the United States, Japan, the Philippines, wherever, we're here for you. Please share this program far and wide to your friends, your neighbors, your loved ones, your family, extended family, your neighbors, your people you work with and the people you associate with on social media. Help me grow this channel and help me help others come unto Christ. Come unto Christ. May God bless you and be with you. May God be with you until we meet again. We will see you tomorrow, same place, same bat channel. Have a good night, everybody. Do know that I love you. See you soon. God bless.